review and thoughts of the 2022 movie Matriarch. And yeah, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes, none of them at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Before I dive in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the Second After Strikers. I implore you to do so. And the, then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So I started this video with a review where I almost definitely won't spoil anything. If I decide to do so, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoiler so you can mute and skip ahead and choose even lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending in detail. So this movie is rated R, or TVMA technically, because it it's Hulu. Yeah, uh, that rating makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. I'm just going to be quoting from the MDB Parents Guide here. Sex and nudity has been judged to be severe, violent score, moderate, profanity moderate, severe alcohol, drugs, and smoking, and moderate, frightening, and intense scenes. Yeah, it is. it doesn't have as much sex and nudity and violence score as many horror movies do. What it has, it uses very well. I don't, th you know, not, none of it is just there to shock or titillate. And let's see. It does some things that, you know, it has some, some very gross content. And I did see some people take issue with that. I would say it's completely justified by the story, and if you don't want to see gross stuff, I don't know what you're doing watching horror movies. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I enjoy that stuff, but it's there for a reason. It has an impact. And I have watched this movie once, and I record this, I hit record just as soon as the end credits had finished rolling. And, yeah, so, the plot. I'm going to quote a fellow critic here. After an overdose nearly takes her life, Laura Birch, Jemima Rupert, escapes from the high-staked pressure of the advertising world to return to her roots, accepting an invitation home from her estranged mother, Kate Dickey, playing Celia. Laura hopes the time away in the secluded English village will help calm the demons raging inside of her. She soon discovers that the locals of the town... Let's see. Let's just say there's there's something strange going on with them. That's all I will say so as to not spoil. So this was both written and directed by Ben Steiner, and this is the only so far feature that he has directed. He did direct for the feature length Monsterland 2. But that movie is a series of shorts. Uh, you know, it, it reaches, from, from what I understand, I haven't watched it, it, it does reach basically feature length. It's an hour and 13 minutes, according to MDB. But it is, uh, yeah, it's a series of, of shorts. He directed one of those shorts. <clears throat> Other than this, he has... Yeah, this is this is the seventh thing he has directed. The first six are all shorts. I did watch Earn, which is supposedly I, I'm not sure I 100% see it, but supposedly that move that that short was basically like the the this is the the full length adaptation of that. You know that was proof of concept. And, yeah, Hulu said, here you go, here's enough money to make a feature-length film. Uh, he, the, the only thing that he directed that he didn't write is the, the Monsterland 2 short. And, yeah, I, I really hope that he gets to make more features. And I could see myself watching more of his shorts as well. 
uh, yeah, that the the, the um, let's see. Right. Uh, the movie does a good job with plot twists. There are not too many. I don't think any of them are bad. There aren't too few, although I could definitely understand the perspective that, you know, I'm, I'm sure some people feel that too much of the movie passes without twists and, and in general, plot progression. None of the twists are too easy to figure out for the viewer, and it's not one of those movies that only works until you learn the twist and then completely falls apart. I would definitely say, like, the middle of the movie does not have a huge amount of, of plot. Like, the first third or so, you know, I suppose it's not necessarily that there's a huge amount of plot, but it is, you're, you're getting a sense of who Laura is. And, yeah, the, the middle, like, you get a strong sense of, like, her past, but I suppose what I'll say is, given something that by then we've seen, I can understand, I didn't feel it myself, but I can understand some people expressing that they felt the, the middle third was simply too, you know, not, not quite enough new stuff happens. It's mostly us learning about things that happened, you know, 20 years prior when Laura was, you know, yeah, before Laura left the the village. Um, and, yeah, so, some people will wish that the movie was just the first and last thirds. And it is the kind of thing where, like, if the... if there weren't the expectations that there are for you know, feature length running time, although this one does only barely reach it, but maybe the rules are different for streaming. Um, I think this might have been, I'm not saying lose the middle third, but I could see how it could be tightened up, you know, so that it is more more plot driven and less you know but it is very much about the the atmosphere and it has incredible cinematography and editing the the cinematography handled by Alan C McLaughlin the editing by Jim Page and yeah Alan C McLaughlin has 62 finished credits as cinematographer and three upcoming. Jim Page has edited 78 completed things, has eight upcoming. And yeah, some of these are shorts, but they're both extremely talented and they 100% understand how this, like there's, there's a couple of sequences that are very fast and where like something really big happens, but a good chunk of the movie is the all about the atmosphere. It's it's very much this thing of you know small village. You know the the other people have compared it to the Wicker Man, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, some people compare it to Hereditary, which I hear good things about, but I have to admit I have not actually watched yet. Um, hmm. I could have sworn there was one more thing people compared it to other than Wicker Man, but I am not seeing it in my notes. Um, yeah, that's, um, so, the, the, um, A lot of the the movie is the the sort of creepy foreboding thing with just these these very there there are shots in the movie that are deeply unsettling and and it kind of feels just it's it's like it it feels unnatural it's like the the angle that we're seeing shouldn't happen kind of thing 
and the editing does a really good job just letting things sit for long enough it's not in a rush and you know perhaps some of that is the fact that the movie is fairly short to me it doesn't feel like they were artificially prolonging it and and making it slow and and so you know i've seen plenty of horror movies where they just didn't have enough material and they just let certain things drag on forever this is not that now I have been very happy with dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. I've agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows for many years. I think in recent years the filmmakers have gotten better in making it especially biting, not holding back. So a ranking of all except for this. At the end of the review I'll update this ranking with this movie as well. But but yeah, so these are worst to best and, and the Antlers is the only that I didn't love. So. Antlers, Jagged Mind, Clock, Not Okay, The Menu, Nightingale 2018, Ready or Not, Plan B, Barbarian, Fresh, The Night House, Prey, Everything er Everywhere All at Once, and Oppenheimer. And I suppose I could briefly compare. So I have not watched a ton of Hulu Horror or Huluween, as they quite cleverly put it. Other than this, you know, Jagged Mind and Clock are really the only Hulu horror that I've, you know, I, I, I do, you know, I'm aware of Grim Cuddy. I hear positively terrible things about it. Not terrifying, but terrible. And my mouse is dying. I'm just going to see if I can fix that. Maybe not. Okay, hopefully I won't. Probably won't need it. Anyway, yeah, uh, I I personally think that this Jagged Mind and Clock are all quite good. Um, they they do all have this problem where well feature where if not for the the expectation of of length they wouldn't you know they would be shorter than they are but not to the point where it feels like they are just treading water i do um i do hope that some at some point in the future it does get like it's technically the, the definition, it's just not very commonly applied today, technically the definition of what a feature-length movie is, you know, as long as it's like over 45 minutes, you know, but that was also, that was from back before, like, there were, there were different expectations for theatrical experiences back when that was co more common you know so some of the original disney animated features are about 40 you know yeah 45 minutes or so you know today that kind of thing would be like an episode of a horror show and yeah um these three really don't feel like they would fit what i've heard about black mirror you know i'm i'm not saying there's something wrong with Black Mirror. Maybe maybe Twilight Zone, but even that feels not quite right for these three. Again, not saying anything. I, I haven't watched the recent Twilight Zone, but I do there there are several episodes that I really, really love of both the the very, very first and the one from I wanna say it was early two thousands or so. I cannot speak to the quality of like the overall. I've only watched like five episodes or so. Um, the the they do a really good job with the atmosphere of the village. Like the the people, if you've been to a village, there can be a certain level of weirdness of of 
you know, the people there can feel odd if you're used to a city, even a small city. But movies like this, uh, you know, this, and as far as I know, Wicker Man and you know, others, they push it a bit further. So you know there's something wrong. But they do a really great job with that. You know, the movie doesn't... It, it trusts the audience to not need something big constantly that we will, you know, be interested throughout these scenes where it is just, like, people being weird. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending does fit what came before. I think the ending is perfect. Uh, I know some people don't particularly like the ending. So, yeah, the movie focuses on Laura, and she is not in the best place like she you know her job is going well but she's kind of you know she she's like it's not that she hates what she does necessarily but she seems somewhat disinterested like she doesn't always show up on time for work and despite her boss Maxine being extremely patient with her you know she doesn't yeah she she doesn't really seem to want to be there that much you know she has a habit or two that are not the least self-destructive I've ever seen and just yeah you know you you get the sense from very early on she's not happy like this is not you know, and, and yeah, the movie does a really, really great job, you know, showing that. And, you know, we do get an explanation for why. You know, some of it is definitely her her mother's treatment of her when she was growing up. You know, the, she basically left as soon as at all possible. And some people did not really like that aspect of the film saying that the lead is unlikable which I I hope I look forward to the day where we stop using that as a criticism and just use it as like okay so let me describe you know let in order to explore why I have to let you know the lead is unlikable here's what that's saying here's why and here's why it works or doesn't work you know it, I'm not saying it always works you know but it's it's really frustrating seeing these amazing horror movies get shit on because people want to see likable characters A again I don't know what you're doing watching horror movies like I'm not saying it's bad for movies to have likable characters but there's a lot of horror movies where it just does not work for the the lead character to be likable. And this is one of them. Kate Dickey as Celia does phenomenal. Everyone is phenomenal in this. But Kate Dickey, like, there's something right under the surface that she's repressing. When Laura comes back and, and sees Celia again, Celia appears very patient with her. Like, Laura is bringing up these horrible traumas from, from childhood, and Celia, like, some of the time, she's just, like, she, she just lets Laura say it. Occasionally, she'll be like, was it that bad? You know, she can. She gets very passive aggressive. It wasn't really that bad, was it? You know, kind of. But she's not like it's. It's you know, she's basically gaslighting her. She. I I won't reveal if she ever gets there, but for a long time, certainly, she is not very like. What's the word? I just gotta see what that is, because that doesn't sound right. Okay. 
yeah, for for a good chunk of the movie, she does not express like outright. You know, she she seems to genuinely want to reconcile. You know, and the fact this this contrast is very effective. And this is where I take issue with some people saying, "Oh, there's too much tell not show." You know, we only get. You know, here Laura says that she was treated badly. Which, like, yeah, a lot of a lot of people still don't believe women trust. You know, listen to women when they say that something is bad. You know, the the movie makes it very clear. Laura is accurate in what she describes, and you know, I I don't know why anybody feels the need to see a child be abused in order to believe that it happened when a, a grown woman is saying that she was abused, but whatever. Um, but yeah, this contrast, the fact that Celia really doesn't push back that much, like a little bit, sure, but she's not like constantly screaming at Laura, which like when Laura talks to and about Celia, you get this very distinct, very harsh image of her and that's not what we're seeing right now. So the fact that I'm I'm not saying that it's difficult to believe, but it does make clear that even as much as Celia is at least like trying to make you know, se seemingly trying to reconcile Laura has been hurt so badly by her that it that she's really struggling to to forgive which is understandable but it also really underlines wow it must really have been bad you know and right and and Laura can get very passive aggressive sometimes like really snapping at people including strangers if she feels like you know it, yeah sometimes there's good reason for it but other times it is like the 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 pain she's feeling she can't contain it and um right sarah paul plays abby who is the the childhood friend of laura and the fact that she's you know she is still in in this village and yeah, there's just there's something there you can't put your finger on it from right away, but yeah, you know, every everyone in the village, there's something going on. Oh, right, and I did see at least one reviewer say Oh right, I, I forget if I mentioned uh Maxine is played by Frank Ashman. Um, I did see at least one reviewer say that Jemima Rupert is ugly. I really, really hope that he meant, like, figuratively and that he's not, like, saying I can't watch a movie if the lead isn't conventionally attractive. But certainly she, metaphorically speaking, she has, she, she at least has ugliness in her at the very, very least. Now... That right. So this was filmed in the as as far as I've been able to tell. This was actually filmed in this in in a in an English village, uh, and yeah, they really get some great. Um, what's the word? The the. It is there's a there's a very you you get a sense of of location and it really helps a lot that it was you know yeah it wasn't done on a on a studio back lot some movies really do benefit from that kind of thing but this was not one now the music is really really great um the let's see okay i'm gonna go ahead and try i'm guessing suvi iva aikas 
is how you pronounce the composer. The they have six completed and one upcoming. And yeah, some of these are short, and they have ten credits as music department. Being a composer's assistant on Men, the Alex Garland film, which I have not seen, but I might at some point, even though it has been... It's gotten a lot of criticism, much more so than his previous ones, and I'm a little worried that he may have gone a little too far out of his comfort zone on that one. Now, the movie is 81 and a half minutes without end credits, and I did not write down how... I've, I'm guessing like 85 or 86 with... And... Yeah. Um, the best elements... It's a, it's a tie between the acting, the tone, the... the um, technical aspects and just this exploration of just this truly terrible mother that Celia was and her personality what makes a terrible mother right uh real quick i it's, i saw some people saying oh you know we always hear about how bad the patriarchy is but this movie isn't about that and it's like Two things can be true at the same time. It's possible for patriarchy to be awful. It is. Spoiler alert. And for some mothers to also be terrible. And a lot of bad mothers are bad mothers in part because of patriarchy. So I, I don't know why people are acting like this. Oh, you know, this one movie completely disproves, which it, it doesn't even at all. Even, it's not even trying to completely disproves that patriarchy is is the best. does that do, do people think patriarchy means some bad some dads are bad because you really need to to better understand wow anyway moving on this is the part where i try to force myself to say at least one actually negative thing about the movie I I don't know if I have I I suppose um, yeah the perhaps the the worst thing I could say about it is it does feel like the the um, certain parts of the movie don't feel like they are they belong in the same movie as certain other parts I don't think this is a big problem. It is something that will bother some. It already, you know, I did see some people saying that it, you know, bothered them. You know, it's it's the kind of thing of like, you know, comparatively like, you know, an, another violent and gory horror movie that that uses special effects would be the thing that movie is very consistent throughout you know this movie less so you know and yeah so um yeah um uh, stuff i saw other people criticize about it it's you know some some people felt it was boring i hugely disagree and yeah honestly i think i've spent as much time as I feel like talking about nonsense criticisms of this movie. This is one of those movies, this, this this Jagged Mind and Clock, I really feel like people, like, it's fine to not like a thing, but people will rate low a thing that apparently just wasn't their kind of thing, and write reviews where they just they they just describe certain things from the movie that they didn't like and don't at all consider you know maybe there's a reason it's in the movie like there are bad movies out there you know i i know it's kind of my go to maybe i bring it up too much but 
Yue Bowl, and yes, I know, that's the... Apparently you should pronounce it Ooh. I don't like him, so I'm going to mispronounce it. His The House of the Dead. And I'm not just saying that because I love the first game and the, the you know, House of the Dead Overkill. And I certainly have, there are definitely positive things about 2, 3, and the typing of the dead. Certainly the typing of the dead. I credit that game with my ability to, I actually don't even know how you say that in English. I'm, I can type with all ten fingers. I don't know if there's a, t ten finger typing? That's, that's, that would be the literal translation of what we say in Danish. Anyway, but his House of the Dead, that's an actual bad horror movie, you know. And it's not that it doesn't have gore. It's not that it doesn't have at least some actors who, at least elsewhere, are talented. But the way it's filmed and edited and the writing and direction, it's, that movie is a complete mess. That's a movie that makes sense to leave a really negative review on. Yeah, some, some people haven't watched, they, they don't know how bad movies can get in, in order to be giving low ratings to stuff like this, Jagged Mine, and Clock. Anyway, yeah, so the thing I, you know, based on, like, reviews and such, the thing I was most worried about was that this would be confusing, and it wasn't, uh, I was looking forward to female-centric horror, and the movie absolutely delivered and uh, the trailer does give too much away it's in in some some aspects of the film it does do a good job of conveying and i do think the trailer is worth watching just wait until after the cover and poster do not give too much away and yeah they they give you some big clues about what the movie is like without spoiling anything. So let's see them. I I saw some people say that some of the some of the movie was so so poorly lit that they couldn't completely tell what was going on I think you just need like I I know they're expensive but I, th I think you might just need a better TV or, or to fiddle around with you know c contrast and such it, it was you know my, my TVs I don't know over a decade old at this point had absolutely no problem um, so so yeah now, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but there's nothing in this movie that's actually difficult to make out, as long as you're watching it on, you know, yeah. Now, the, yeah, so on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an 85% based on 13 reviews, 11 fresh and 2 rotten. The average rating is 7.0. And... Yeah, so the, the two rotten ones say Steiner's debut bites off more, a bit more than it can chew with its narrative, but its striking horror imagery sticks with you. I I, I don't I, I don't agree with the negative part of that. And yeah, yeah, this this person says the you know yeah, the rotten review is where I, I read that some people couldn't tell. Yeah, I, 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 th I think you just need, you know, yeah, better TV to watch it on. Now, it only has a 39% from audiences with over 50 ratings, the average rating being 2.7 out of 5. And I very much think that's down to, like, expectations now on Metacritic that's right it does not have um, yeah it has neither a meta score or a user score 
because there are two that the, yeah they need four reviews or ratings respectively in order to feature to, to have that and they don't on IMDB it has a 4.5 out of 10 based on 2700 ratings and yeah I it's it's wild to me that it's this low and I yeah before I get too far into it let me just say I I really feel like it's yeah people are rating it way too low um 20% gave it a 5 18.4 gave it a 4 13.8 gave it a 6 11.8 gave it a 3 11.3 .3 gave it a 1 9.3 gave it a 7 7.3 gave it a 2, 4.2 gave it an 8, 2.6 gave it a 10, 1.4 gave it a 9. So, yeah, um, feels to me like it just hasn't really found its audience on, yeah. Um, there are 36 IMDb user reviews, 26 if you hide spoilers. There are, uh, right, right, and yeah. Eight people gave it a one out of ten. No one gave it a two. Six gave it a three. Two gave it a four. Three gave it a five. Five gave it a six. Three gave it a seven. Two gave it an eight. Two gave it a nine, and another two gave it a ten. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of low ratings. Of the IMDb external reviews section, I was able to read twenty of the twenty-four links and. Let's see. Yeah, uh, the special effects are very impressive. I would say that I could I could make out that at least some of it was CG, but I wouldn't really say it was bad. It was, you know, somewhat like there wasn't a huge amount of light on it, which I think was in order to better, you know, yeah, make it appear convincing but I would definitely not say that I had a difficult time making out what I was looking at there are some practical effects and yeah some of them are absolutely glorious like really really fantastic gore just yeah um this is not a movie to watch either while eating or soon after you ate. It is not. That's not a good... Yeah. There are some really great stunts, although a few of them are hampered by budget limitations where, like, yeah, you know, technically the person fell, but you couldn't really... S you don't see them land kind of thing, which, you know, that is, you know, if you if you know very much about stunts, the landing is one of the parts that is especially difficult to to make look good without getting the stunt people hurt and that was um an area where the budget just didn't quite yeah now the um, i am putting uh, right now it's looking like just one link in the description box below the yeah it's it's easy to make out which is which it is uh, but but yeah a really excellent um, review text review and yeah um, I rate this eight terrible mothers out of ten I hope this will be liked better in the future I, I really in my opinion it just hasn't found its audience like a lot of the people you know I can't say for everyone who who rated but every review I read that was like really negative like it mostly just feels like it's just not their kind of movie you know or you know some of them will point to something that is really effective in the movie and they'll just say it as if it's bad as if it's bad that it's in the movie as if Horror movies aren't supposed to push your buttons, which, yeah, I, I, anyway, 
Right, and I, I, I am aware that some people hate the term elevated horror, but, you know, some people seek it out, some people seek to avoid it. I would definitely say this movie is elevated horror. And, yeah, I absolutely think that it deserves, a, yeah, better reception than it has gotten. And that brings us to the, yeah, um, so the updated rating, ranking, the updated ranking of all the dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy. To be clear, there's not a lot of comedy in this one. That's why I say and or. This is mostly horror. There is a little bit of comedy. Some of the ones I mentioned are not comedy at all. But ranked worst to best, and yeah, the Antlers is the only that I didn't love. Antlers, Jagged Mind, Clock, Not Okay, The Menu, Nightingale 2018, Matriarch, Ready or Not, Plan B, Barbarian, Fresh, The Night House, Prey, Everything Everywhere, All at Once, and Oppenheimer. And that is it for the review itself. So from here on out, huge spoilers. Yeah, starting with notes taken while watching. So yeah, we open on the, the yeah, a man stepping naked into mud. I really appreciate how, like, the, the subtitles, you know, note mud squelching. And yeah, like, they really gave it their all in both the the noise and just the visual like really making it just completely disgusting you know and yeah we do later realize this was the the father of Laura and i quite appreciate that the first we see of Laura she is emerging from the the pitch black of this underground you know you know we're seeing the what's it called the stairs into the the underground tunnel i'm 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 guessing like train yeah you know and she emerges from the pitch black area that's on purpose you know we see her father dis you know we don't know at the time that that's her father but we see a man disappear into blackness and then we see her emerge from it, you know, drawing a visual parallel there. Very, very nicely done. And just, yeah. You know, because, like, on its surface, it's just, oh, yeah, she's she's going for a run. You know, big deal. Everybody, you know, lo lots of people go for a run. And I quite appreciate that we actually, for the first several minutes of her, after the, the very squelchy mud you know that's some very clear natural audio but then when we see her we don't actually hear for like there's maybe one or two minutes no natural audio just this soft piano score that's like implying you know there's something wrong kind of thing the first natural sound we get of hers is when she retches into the toilet which again, you know, draws a parallel, you know, he went into mud and, and some, you know, at this point it's not the, 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 the black goo that's coming out of her, but, you know, it is still, yeah. And that, yeah, we meet Max. Wow, she has a lot of patience for a boss under capitalism. Very, very, yeah, we should all be that lucky. I, I am as well, but a lot of people are not. And yeah, Max points out you've had that cold for forever. And yeah, really, really like, you know, there's a shot in her where she's in the office, like typing, and we just see like her, ref you know, her face reflected in this black surface of the table. Very, very nicely done. And yeah, you know, she she passes like this, I, I guess the neighbor, and, you know, the, the 
the neighbor girl is feeding her her baby and you know the the girl's mother is like you know you you should it's something about like he he can wait you know let's get inside first and Laura you know says babies need to feed you know and this is obvious like to be clear a lot of people would choose to to get involved there and I don't think there's something inherently wrong with her doing that but I do think this is personal this is not, you know, they, they don't specify if that was something that she, you know, that, that her mother would not feed her as a baby when she needed to. But, you know, it, it tells us, you know, she has an issue with, like, mothers who, you know, that, that's the kind of thing. And, and, yeah, um, I try to be sympathetic to everyone I guess maybe the mother yeah I don't I I got nothing uh, she kinda just seems like you know yeah she she seems like she might just be a bad person and that's you know yeah this is this is what happens when an immovable force meets an unstoppable object when Laura encounters a bad mother she gets involved, you know, that, like, I don't think there's something inherently wrong with getting involved here, but you do, like, I, I'm not, I don't think they know each other, like, the only other time she sees her is in that nightmare vision thing, so, it's not, like, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're, like, tell your neighbor, you know, you need to do this and this, because you do, you know, hype, you know, you might actually know them. Not not everybody does know their neighbor. But like a complete stranger who you happen to pass, you know, you may want to just let it be. But you know, Laura, it's yeah, it's personal to her. And and you know the the yeah when the the mother of the girl next door says. I didn't feed her whenever she, you know, cried or something like that. I half expected Laura to say something like, and look how she turned out, but she doesn't get quite that harsh. And, yeah, she, you know, she gets close and, you know, the, the girl points out, you know, she's breathing on the baby with her vodka breath, which yeah, that's not, that's not good for a, for a baby, so that's, yeah, and she gets very offended when the, the mother of the girl says, you know, I, I have a breath mint, and yeah, she goes home, and we see her sniffing coke, and I think we might have our answer as to why she's had a cold forever. I don't think her, when, when she, you know, we see her sniffing coke, I don't think the room is warm enough. And the, yeah, and, and she, she calls, I have to admit, I did not catch the name of the, uh, and apparently neither did the oh Katrin, that's right, Katrine. Wow, that's a um yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna point out that apparently the neighbor girl is credited as Gemma the baby eater, which I'm sure is wonderful to have on your resume. But yeah, I mean, there's a certain there's a certain logic to, to calling that. And I guess angry mother is Gemma's mother, maybe? Anyway, um, but but yeah, you know, she calls Katrin and, you know, ha is like, has it really been that long? Because, you know, she only calls when she wants something out of Katrin. She doesn't, she, she doesn't take care of the people around her because that's a maternal thing and her mother was not maternal she she never learnt 
how to take care of the people around her you know and we see this throughout the movie the the yeah you know even like we we don't know how long she and Catherine have known each other but certainly like Abby her childhood best friend friend with benefits and she just abandoned her and didn't contact her for 20 years you know that's not very maternal and I'm not saying you know oh Laura's a bad person we should hate her for it I'm saying this is what Celia has done to her and you know she goes from you know calling her and saying has it really been that long to saying you should move in you know you could be my friend or our girlfriend which you know whatever because like she's lonely but she can't really connect with other people because that's something that you know it's not the only way to learn it but it is substantially easier to learn if you have a childhood where you feel a connection to your immediate family it doesn't have to be biological parents it can be foster family but if you have nothing if you have no one you don't develop that and you know you still might have needs which is of course how you know after Catherine leaves you know she tries to fill in that hole with wine and coke and let's see. yeah and she face plants in the bathroom and this is one of those places where I think if we actually saw the face hit I think that would have had a, a really strong effect and it's not like the movie shies away you know so this is what I'm saying with the the stunt budget you know it's not like the movie shies away from blunt force trauma to the face later on you know so it really feels like a budget thing I, th I think it would have been really really yeah you know you see her fall and you don't you know obviously they had like a, a pillow they had something for her face to, to hit when she actually falls you know if yeah if they cut in a, a shot of like a face really yeah Let's see. and right I, I yeah and I neglected to mention the before the face plan you know she points out nobody's happy if people were happy I wouldn't have a job I quite appreciate someone who's that honest about who, who works in that field because it really is yeah that's just 100% true and yeah you know she as she lies there we see the you know the substance maybe it's oil maybe it's the venom symbiote you know and it it gets closer and it goes in her mouth and I really appreciate that because it's you know it must have been animated I don't know that you could really get some you know a real life fluid to cooperate quite that much so it must have been animated I appreciate that we see it for several like you're sitting there thinking please don't go in her mouth please don't go oh it went in her mouth you know it's it's because like the trailer makes it seem like it's over much quicker and Let's see. Yeah, and you know she has the the nightmare, and you know the neighbor who had a baby is now having a baby, and she apparently offers Laura a bite. And I'm of course joking. It was super creepy, very very nicely done. Just the because I love that you you know where it's going because you see this out of focus shot of the mother looking not super happy. And there's some red on her mouth, and it's like that's not that's not misapplied makeup. That's not just lipstick, is it? And you know we hear the baby crying, and you know she's holding it, and and we see just this just the face is fucking gone. Like holy shit, just very nicely done, very very effective. You know really, and and that is like the the. You know, basically, like, when she met Gemma, the baby eater, 
That is an epic name. I, I really appreciate that they named her that. Which, honestly, I could see how, like, on the, like, on the call sheet and, like, if you're doing auditions, like, you know, there's a lot of young women. If you tell them, we would like you to pretend to be eating a baby on camera, they are going to run screaming from the room and bless them for it. So, yeah, Gemma, when we met her in real life, she's being a good mother. She's being the anti-Celia. But in the nightmare, you know, that that is, yeah, she, she does see. I'm not sure, is there, like, a an other connection to because it's not the it doesn't have the black goo and it doesn't really resemble because like her mother yeah I don't because it was like the the face the the head like it, you could better understand if the nightmare had her at the rack or something you know but yeah I, I think it's uh, I, th I think that is what it's there for. And... Let's see the... Right, and they, yeah, they won the pitch. And the, you know, Laura is like, okay, that's, that's good, I guess. And, yeah, you know, the... And Maxine says, you know that's not the culture here. Go home, you're ill, which... Again, like, if only every workplace was like that. So I really appreciate these these little bits that that help, you know, yeah, make you know, cause cause it's like she has a very high paying job. Yeah, you know, some not everybody, but some people who have very high paying jobs are allowed to take time off when they get sick without being fired. You know, she's. Like, in, in part, Maxine probably is trying to mother her, like Laura says. And also, you know, she's making the company a lot of money kind of thing. But, but yeah, you know, it, it does, like, you know, the movie is very clearly set in, in present day. So, you know, I, I appreciate them current fucking daying us as baby brain i mean baby face would would say if if you are feeling like you need like a a boost of of your your mood treat yourself to to his meltdown at the option of pronouns like can you imagine can you imagine having so few problems in your life that you know like like Actual trans people are like, stop murdering us. And then on the other hand, you have these transphobes who are like, I can't believe pronouns are in this video. Like, imagine having so few problems. Motherfuck. If you haven't, you know, make sure you treat yourself to organized chaos. I'm going to make sure to put it in the description box. He did this really great video, basically just like a compilation of all the, I don't know if all, but of various, ah, what's the word? Yeah, various left-wing YouTubers, you know, tearing him apart, and it's, it's glorious. Yeah, it is going to be in the description box. Anyway, that brings... Yeah, so, you know, her mother calls at work and doesn't get through to her, which right away tells us, okay, there's a, there's a connection between the, you know, the goo and, yeah. I guess it could also be the you know, according to at least one of the species sequels. I won't give away which. I guess it could be the species species. And, yeah, and, and you know, she says, no, tell, tell her that I resigned a year ago. 
and let's see. yeah, and you know, Ma yeah, Maxine's being extremely patient with Laura, and Laura is actually triggered by this and says, "It's not my fault your daughter died." You know, and I appreciate every woman in this movie has some issue with their mother, daughter, or both. And, yeah, you know, she, she does apologize right after saying that to Maxine. But it is this thing of, you know, she legitimately is not capable of having a positive relationship with someone else. You know, she's, she's with, with Katrine, she's hot and cold. And with Maxine, she's, like, very passive-aggressive a lot of the time and basically trying to push Maxine away, you know, because, you know, she says it later, I'm not good for you. I'm not good for other people, you know. Yeah, it is it is this thing of, of just, you know, with I, th I think with Katrine, she probably thinks, you know, maybe Katrine could help with that and Katrine is like you have to stop doing this you know it it's not yeah and right I, I really appreciate the fact that the movie never treats lesbianism as some character flaw like you know we we have so so let's see Laura Abby and um, Katrine are lesbian or at the very least sapphic and it's never implied because like Katrine seems well adjusted you know she's probably she maybe needs a little more self-respect to stop her from going to, to Laura's when Laura calls but she does also say no you know it would be so wrong to move in with her that's not you know you you can't you can't get into a romantic relationship with someone in order to fix them you know obviously if if you are already in a relationship and something happens don't just leave them you know try to try to help them but if you know someone is not going to be good for you you know, don't force yourself to, to, you know, you you can try to help them in other ways. You can, you know, maybe try to get them in contact with a good therapist or something, you know. But, yeah, I, I really appreciate and And the movie doesn't paint Katrine as being bad either. She has very little screen time, but you get where she's coming from. And, and yeah, you know, the, the movie doesn't say, oh, Laura's... A lesbian because her mother was bad if you're a lesbian that's just because you had a bad childhood it's you know it's something you'll get over no it's not saying that at all because Abby you know and it, maybe Abby is not the best example Katrine there's no indication that she you know had a bad you know yeah I believe I have said everything that I had about it. Right, and and yeah, so Celia calls, or, or rather, Laura calls Celia in, you know, since Celia called her workplace, and she asks, how did you find me? What do you want? Are you dying? You know, that really tells us how little love there is here. You know, the how did you find me is the kind of thing you say if you were hiding you know that's not the kind of thing like there's there's relatives that I haven't spoken to in years if one of them suddenly contacted me I wouldn't be like how did you find me that really you know just yeah um and and you know in response, you know, and yeah, and Celia says, oh, you're so successful, it wasn't difficult to find you. And in response to, are you dying, she says, everyone is dying. And then she says, you know, Nate, uh, oh, I didn't write it down, but something like nature, yeah, she, 
yeah, nature takes what she get is taking back what she gives, something like that, which, you know, at the time just sounds like, you know, okay, that's a, I mean, I guess that's a, that's one point of view on, you know, yeah, technically, you know, we are all part of this, the, the, the circle of life or whatever it's called, you know, kind of, I can understand it, but, you know, you do later realize, yeah, it's, she means it very literally, and it's because she's so used to the cult. She doesn't really know how to talk to someone who's not in the cult. And then we... Right, I really love that we don't actually see Celia during the call, only later. And when the... Yeah, so when we see her for the first time is also when Laura sees her for the first time in 20 years... And notes, you haven't aged a day, you know, and when we, right, and, and even when we get like an out of focus, like we, we can't quite make out Celia, but we're clearly, the camera is in the room with her. We're still hearing Celia through the, the distorted filter of the, the cell phone from, you know, from, from Laura, so just, you know, immediately there's something off there. You know, the, the, the movie is telling us that there's something wrong. It's not... Yeah. I, I quite enjoyed um, Mrs. Dent and the, the fudge sale scene. You know, she comes back and, like, I knew I recognized that voice. You stole way more than twenty dollars or twenty pounds worth of fudge over the years, and you know she says you knew it was me. And you know she points out, well, if I told your mom, she'd shut me down. And Laura doesn't understand how that's even possible, which you know by the end of the movie we certainly do. And yeah, just this thing, you know. <laughs> That's that's a twenty. Please don't buy all of my my bags because you know she makes them herself, homemade fudge. And you know I, I don't have the change to, to pay you back. And you know then she's like, Look, I'll just I'll buy one. Don't worry about the change. And then she's like, Oh, Laura, I'm not selling you anything. Which like, nice to see you too. I mean, they know each other, they were, they lived in the same village, and, like, seeing her for the first time in 20 years, it's like, I remember you, thief, I don't even want your money, and I quite enjoyed Laura, you know, she does put the, the note down, you know, just, just out of spite, you know, just because Dent said that she doesn't want her money, even if she's not buying anything, just, you know. And we get our first glimpse at the the car sex, which I guess is supposed to be linked to the 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 sex during the the ceremony. Almost must be. I don't quite know what else, because certainly they are, you know, affected by the the goo losing yeah and the fact that like you know when we first see them it's just like well i think you might be better off in a room in than in the car and in parked in a public place but you know you do you or each other as it were but then later we're seeing all the the goo and by the end, they're, like, melting together, like some fucking Cronenbergian nightmare. Like, stage one of that, not, like, later stages, but still, like, that very, very effectively horrifying. And just the fact that we see, I, th I think we only see it these three times, but each time it's gotten a little worse. It's gotten, you know, messed up. Maybe... The, the car sex is an attempt to... Because, like, they think of sex as the way that they 
the, as part of the ceremony, so the ceremony, and the ceremony helps them, so they think they can, like, recreate the effect, maybe. And, yeah, very tense reunion between Laura and Celia. And I appreciate the detail, you know, the, you loved, you used to love to play in the garden. I wasn't playing, I was hiding. And, you know, she's, yeah, she calls the piano the rack and we do know she does still play just on like uh, a keyboard instead of electric keyboard instead of a grand piano it's one of the lesser pianos and yeah and then she says you know oh was it really that bad I never physically abused you they were just words which fuck in case anyone is watching who needs to hear the following, never, ever, ever under any circumstances say that your abuse wasn't that bad and suggest, oh, I mean, it's not like I did X, Y, and Z to you, because, like, fuck off with that bullshit. Jesus Christ. Let's see. And... Yeah, you know, and, and ultimately, Laura does shout at her and run away. And I really appreciate, because we do we see several interactions between them, and Laura does actually come closer and closer to being able to, you know, forgiveness, I don't know, that's, you know, that's a, that's a big ask. But she is making progress, you know, this first time... She's like saying, oh, you you had plastic surgery, didn't you? Did you win the lottery? How did you get the money for the plastic surgery? You know, she's like, again, not the happiest reunion kind of thing, you know. And, yeah, like, by th before the end, before she realizes how fucked up things are, she, yeah, she actually is very, very close to, you know, she's she's communicating very openly with, Celia and and you know she yeah she says I never thought about how it was for you that you know the that her father suicided you know so yeah it is you know that's that's a lot of progress and that's something that I do really appreciate that's part of why I don't think that the middle of the film is is like wasted or anything because you see a lot of progress but I would definitely say, you know, with without a doubt, you could easily see how, like, plot-wise, this could be significantly shorter. Because as it is, as the movie is, and I'm not saying it should be changed, but basically you're seeing, like, over and over, Celia's trying to get Laura into the, you know, to where the, the goddess is played by Anna Frost and enhanced with CGI the the yeah um you know yeah Celia is trying to get Laura in to to be sacrificed to the goddess so you know right at you know she she yeah the 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 cocaine overdose did actually kill Laura she was brought back to life by the goddess, which weakened the goddess, and now, you know, the the effect is wearing off on everyone in the village. So Celia calls her first at at work, you know, and is yeah tries to get her to to come home to the village. And as soon as they meet, she like almost immediately she says. We should go into the garden. You know, the movie could have been like twenty minutes if you if you really wanted it to be. And I'm glad it's it's not only that. But I can understand if some people were maybe frustrated by the fact that you know, and it's one of those things. Like on the other hand, well, do you want her? Do you want Celia to take forever to try to get her into the? You know, so yeah. But but yeah, you know, she's been crushing up sleeping pills and and putting that in the water that she drinks so that she'll be completely knocked out and Celia will be able to get her to the goddess. 
And yeah, I like the exchange. What are you doing? Escaping. And the thing, you know, you're the only one around here who's aged. Thanks. It's just like you to say the wrongest possible thing. And yeah, then she calls Celia and says she's coming back so that Celia can be ready to pretend to be yeah the the so that Laura will will lower her guard and yeah I, I really appreciate that we see this betrayal so early on and you know later we do get a uh, an explanation you know it, it yeah Abby was affected by it as well which yeah that does mean that there at the end she agrees to that Abby dies as well yeah very very harsh but you can understand how the and and it is you know it is wrong to be doing yeah and yeah so so Celia checks if Laura is completely asleep by first whispering her name or saying her name and then shouting it and that wakes her up so she leaves it for the next day yeah and and you know the, the next day Laura says when you're ready to stop making excuses maybe we can make up you know and I yeah that might be the the most like emotionally intelligent and and like healthy social relationship kind of thing she says and does in the entire movie and yeah we see the the black goo and it's basically coming out of all orifices over the course of this movie you know this is the part where it is on the toilet paper I don't think I need to get more overt in talking about what exactly is taking place there but yeah and and again like shit's weird you know that is that is disgusting and it absolutely it's 100% backed up by the you know the plot and and really also yeah like thematically it makes sense it is this like inside of her is this awful thing that her mother put there and you know she can't contain it anymore yeah and this is when we see that the car sex people are also having black goo and and Celia and yeah and this time Laura is fully asleep I think she also drank more of the water so that helps explain that and then she drags her down the stairs and you know that's when she wakes up she you know she tries to see if she's fully asleep by you know slapping her face which they they did a, a good job on it 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 had a slightly awkward quality to it but it largely looked convincing and then she finds the the diary and sees the the glossary with the the sex and the you know one uh, yeah rating them between 1 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 for for sex and can't help but laugh and call her mother a word that I don't want to repeat Let's see yeah and we're told that the berries are from the greenhouse which yeah that And uh, yeah, and then we get the the detail that once Celia threatened to to tape Laura's mouth shut, and she snorts, which yeah, I quite appreciate the dark comedy of Celia trying to run with Laura, like just you know, she, yeah, Laura's like, look, I got I gotta go for a run, I gotta clear my head, you know. And we see Celia like take off her shoes and and slip into these like sneakers or whatever the like running shoes kind of thing, and yeah, just it looks it looks comical, you know. It's like, lady, just would you just let your dad go for a walk? It's just it's it's ridiculous, you know. And and yeah, like because 
yeah, I just, I, I appreciate that it's, I, I don't know if they could have made it just, like, scary, but the I just really appreciate the fact that it is darkly comedic without, it, it doesn't break the tone. And, yeah, uh, Celia calls... And tells you know the the ceremony can't continue, and and you know Laura says, "Aren't you a bit young for bingo?" Not realizing that this guy, you know, he's one of the ones who hasn't aged for twenty years, or I guess possibly he may have e he may even look younger than he did when she was a kid. I'm not sh sure if there is a, a limit. And we see these paper, you know, paper cutout things hanging that, you know, some of them thank for what they were given. One of them is like asking specifically for what was, yeah. So, and and yeah, you know, Abby does admit that she was following Laura. And, yeah, confronts her, you know, you just fucked off. And, and yeah, Laura con confronts her, con confronts Celia, and, and says, you know, Abby told me, you know, uh, it c confessed or something. And then, you know, Celia very, very strategically asks about what? Because there's a lot that Appy could have confessed to. You know, considerably more than she did. And... Yeah. Um, ah, crap. What was his name again? Um, uh, Ken. It, you know, is like, I, you know, God was able to cure your cancer, but not your mother's and you know we can tell from Abby's face that's not exactly what happened and and you know Celia says you learn a lot about yourself by having kids and that is sadly true and I, I wish more people would try to learn about themselves you know to try to try to imagine having a kid and and like you know because because a lot of People have kids and then end up being terrible parents because they didn't know themselves well enough. And I realize there's certain things that happen when you have a kid that can't be completely simulated, but some people aren't even making the effort, is what I'm saying. And yeah, we we are told that it was her father who suicided at the start of the film. And yeah, Laura tells Celia she was saved by the pond. And we see part of the greenhouse is just pitch black. We're told that her father had green fingers before he died as well. And she never actually met her father. You know, it was... And, and yeah, by the end we realize, yeah, you know, she she wasn't even conceived before, after her father died. It was the the goddess that conceived her and Celia comes very close and and doesn't stop because she like changes her mind but because Laura turns around in time she comes very close to braining Laura with a flower pot and and you know after all this Celia you know reverts to the way she was and Laura says, there she is, you know, and, and this is the thing, you know, yeah, all along, Celia has just been pretending to not be like that. And the, I, I forget exactly what prompts the line, but yeah, Laura tells Celia, I thought you collected cocks. And, and yeah tells that she read the diary and then we see the the sleeping pills for the water and a worm comes out Jesus 
and and you know Celia says get out and Laura thinks it's because of the diary and actually apologizes and the car sex people are are becoming one right and the yeah she yes yeah, she says the service is canceled tell everyone sorry the earlier thing that was Ken saying you know the the service the the ceremony can't go on and I like the um, Laura telling Abby there are these fucking weird diagrams about sex that you know positions I couldn't even imagine. And and Celia tells I gotta admit I I'm mixing up Gerald and Leonard so um Gerald I think it is you talk like you fuck. And see. yeah, and and Abby and Laura start to get it on, but then we see the the black stuff with the arm, and we enter the third act, which gets quite big compared to earlier in the movie. And yeah, we see the the villagers naked in the church, drinking goo from the nipples, and then engaging in an orgy. So the you know it's obviously similar to you know a mother feeding her baby through the nipples, which is something that the movie made sure we saw earlier, so that that would be in our mind. But here it's going on forever. You know, she's been nursing these people for twenty years, and I guess. Yeah, actually, even for the, yeah, she, she must have nursed, uh, yeah, for as long as Laura has been alive at all. She's been doing this, and yeah, it leads to adoration, and that's what she wants. That's how she's able to keep doing this, even though it is obviously, you know, it's a, it's a very messed up thing to do. You know, I, I suppose ultimately it doesn't do that much to like argue against this other than like it's not Christian and you know for a lot of people that's enough. That means it's bad. Um, considering the thematic richness, I'm okay with with that. Though you know, I've I've always been I've yeah been saying since forever. If you gotta worship something, worship nature. That's the thing that's actually giving you life and you know keeping you alive, keeping you healthy. It's not this you know old white guy with a long beard who kills you for homosexuality. That's just not. Yeah. Um. I think that is about. But but yeah, it actually. You know, overall, it's not that negative uh, perception. Like the peop the goddess herself does not come out looking evil. She actually refuses to. You know, yeah, she won't kill Laura for the the lives of the others. You know, we see like she she does not really. She's she's happy enough to to absorb Leonard. So, yeah, uh, you know, if anything, like, certainly some, there are evil actions in this film, they're all chosen by the humans. And it's, you know, and, and we also see, you know, the goddess is their slave. You know, it's not that, it's essentially, they are taking power from something that isn't trying to, you know the yeah the goddess herself is not trying to do this and they're just you know enjoying it and up uh, you know but it's not christian they are they made her their slave because of their selfish desires you know desire for eternal youth for example and you know obviously it's not selfish of abby to not want to die of cancer but the you know she appears to be the only person who used it for something like everybody else 
seems to have used it to to reverse aging and yeah you know it's it's not the fact that it's not christian that's really bad here it is this you know the the it's probably yeah i'm i'm not going to i i don't think it's quite like you know oh they're also I, I don't think it's like about climate change, for example, because it's not really affecting nature. It's only affecting the people. But, yeah, you know, this thing of they are... What's the word? It's it's somewhat like... You know, yeah, they're playing with forces that they... No, I th yeah, I think I've I've gone into it as much as I can, and yeah, Laura gets really really messed up with the the black stuff, and then you know Ken explains, uh, you know the the um, yeah her father gave you know didn't take his life, wasn't taking his life in the marsh, he was giving it, and. Yeah, and and we see, you know, Laura Laura is quite surprised given that this is England, where not every old white guy has a gun that Ken does. And yeah, very very nicely done with the the goddess and the worms and just yeah, really really nasty. And yeah, we're told you know she feeds us the the let's see the earth eats its children you know and she seeded you so this is very much paganism or nature worship you know and there is an like there there is some superstition when it comes to, to that kind of thing with like certain uh, what's the word rituals within that can are you know supposedly can make you Hold on. Uh, certain rituals can make you more fertile, and the yeah, I I think that is, and yeah, and we're told you know the goddess, you know they refer to her as as she was what brought Laura back from death by overdose, and this of course weakened the goddess, and now the village is dying because of of this you know the they didn't the yeah cuz cuz Laura was created completely by the the goddess and that's what made Celia you know yeah Celia carried the baby from the goddess and you know because she treated Laura so badly because she didn't care about Laura Laura was just the source of her power you know she is a narcissist she she had a kid to have someone that would adore her and then after a while you know Laura even says once I became a person with my own opinions you didn't like that and that is sadly there are a lot of parents who view their kids as like this extension of themselves like you know, you know, check this out. I got a kid. You know, the look at look at how fertile I am. Look at my ability to afford a kid. You know, isn't that impressive? When you should be thinking about, you know, is what I'm doing good for my child? You know, so I, I really appreciate. They really do a good job exploring what makes a bad mother and what motivates a bad mother and you know like Celia could have called Laura she's had 20 years to and she didn't because Laura wasn't a problem for her anymore you know she didn't need to feed her or alternatively tape her mouth shut she didn't you know they weren't you know arguing anymore so Celia was fine. It was only when she needed her again that she contacted her. And, you know, the fact that Celia, like, 
if Celia, from the start, when Laura came back, admitted, you know, I made a mistake, I should have treated you better, she might actually have, you know, it, it might have gone better. She certainly doesn't like when Laura runs off, which, you know, is of course because she realizes that Laura might realize, you know, from being around the village, the, you know, the, the cult thing. She doesn't like Laura running off, but she doesn't treat Laura well enough that Laura doesn't want to run off, you know, because of her ego, because of her narcissism. Narcissists are incapable of admitting when they've done something wrong, so she keeps minimizing it instead. And very tense as Laura is almost taken by the goddess. And, yeah, you know, Celia says, everyone in the village will die if, uh, let's see, if they do not, f yeah, if, uh, yeah, something like, if they do not feed, or if I don't feed them, something like that. Bef if, oh, right, if she doesn't feed before she is free, and Laura frees her without hesitation. And it's the kind of thing, like, Celia, motherfuck, you might as well have said... You know, if you if you free the goddess, there's going to be so much candy. Like this is gonna create world peace. Like Celia knows her daughter so little and is so deep into the cult mindset, she doesn't even realize what you're telling her is except like you're you're telling her. Like this is this is like Superman telling Lex Luthor. Kryptonite is my kryptonite, which, when you know, he has actually done that in at least one of the movies. But that's you know that's because he's you know oh Mr. Boy Scout so so naive. But Celia has so little understanding of Laura's motivation that she actually does yeah. And let's see yeah and and Celia is unapologetic and goes full narcissist here at the end. And she says the line, do you see now what love is? Jesus. And yeah, um, the, yeah, the, you know, Laura beats, you know, she, she was going to shoot. I really appreciate Ken for not putting I don't know if it was just like forgetfulness or incompetence or or maybe he really did only want to th use it to threaten with I really appreciate just the the sheer visceral thrill satis satisfaction of Laura beating Celia's head in like just destroying her head very nice practical effects I'm so glad practical effects are back because there was a while in the early to mid-2000s where I was like, fuck, I'm never going to see a new movie that has practical effects, am I? And just, you know, fan, just epic last line of the movie with, you know, you are not... I, I forget if it's you're not or you never were my mother. You're just the see you next Tuesday I came out of. I don't have a problem with Laura saying it. I don't feel comfortable repeating the C word myself, but yeah, that is exact that's a fantastic final line. And I'm not going to claim that I really understand the reason for for her peeing on the stairs, but it didn't like I saw two different people bring it up and they were like, "What the fuck?" and it's like, I mean, does it really bother you that much? Like, it's a horror movie. It's, it's just, I don't know, I find it interesting that they're like, I can't believe she peed on the stairs. They're not like, I can't believe I saw a woman beat her own mother to death, to destroy her head. Like, anyway. And, yeah, we end with Laura going into the marsh to be with the, the goddess again. And this does, of course, end the, the cycle because the you know her father went into the marsh in order to make uh, Celia pregnant. Laura goes into the marsh. She definitely has no intention of 
that leading to, to pregnancy by anyone, and she's reuniting with her actual mother, the, the goddess, which, you know, that's, yeah, like, it's, it's, you know, it's not like a happy ending, but it is a, it's, it's a very logical place to go. Um, the, the, you know, she's basically wanted a real mother her entire life, and yeah, she would rather be with the goddess in whatever exact, you know, we don't know exactly what that means instead, you know, but yeah, really, really excellent Lovecraftian horror, and I felt comfortable putting, you know, the Silent Hill games behind me because I figured that I actually, I don't even know if yeah, if, if you know, you know, if you don't, it, I can imagine it's probably difficult to even make out. But you're right, other than the Silent Hill games, I also put both of the Obscure games, which, you know, I have done videos on. I, yeah, I love a lot about both of those games, as well as Cold Fear, which I also think there's a lot to love in. The Penumbra Collection, which... Yeah, love the first two Penumbra games, and the third is fine. And Nocturne, which is also an excellent game. But yeah, um, you know, Sound Hill for the, you know, small town, you know, supernatural horror. And, you know, the protagonist is someone from the village who returns and realizes there's something going on with a cult, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I felt like it was vague enough, and then you, of course, the obscure games is some, some normal people dealing with a cult, and Cold Fear also for this, you know, that one also has this sort of Lovecraftian thing, as does Penumbra and Nocturne. Yeah, um, I'm glad Lovecraft is still being adapted, and I really appreciate that this is not as, you know, racist, as xenophobic as Lovecraft is. It really is the, the fact that they are enslaving the, the goddess and taking advantage of someone else which, you know, you wouldn't ever want a mother to do that, but, yeah, some parents do take advantage of their children. You know, and in this case, it's not only, or only, it's not solely the child that they're taking advantage of. Um, I think that might be about what I have to say Yeah, um, so, yeah, that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite H.P. Lovecraft uh, story, and do you think he is best suited for movie, as, you know, the case is here, video game, as some of the ones I have just mentioned, I believe there's like at least one series, though I don't think I've watched any of them. And and obviously, if you, you know, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And if you are, you know, a fan of adaptations of him, make sure you check out Deus Deacon. He's made some really excellent. You know what? I am just gonna put a link to his channel so that you don't have to figure out the spelling. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description box. There we go. Now, the... Yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. Like, it's a female cult leader who abused... No, don't hit people. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant playlists. They suggest every video you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. 
one talking about my spoiled for the thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Ahsoka. One for my thoughts on the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of The Bear. Same thing for Scream Queens. I do a daily vlog talking about my thoughts on the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything Marvel, every Marvel show that's not animated but is on Disney+. Plus. I'm doing like two animated ones. But only the like uh, adult animation. I think they're called like Hit Monkey and Modoc. Recently, the Ruin Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back carol. This was Catch Me Next Week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching recording. I'll catch you next time. And remember, make sure to free the Earth Goddess. She did nothing wrong.